India has a long and glorious history. Several great kings and dynasties have left a credible mark, bringing great changes, development and growth. There were dynasties which ruled for more than 500 years, spreading to the neighboring countries of Southeast Asia or Central Asia. Today, we the students of class 12 are going to discuss only few of such dynasties through our PPT. For a long time, the story of Satvahanas was enveloped in darkness. Hints of their greatness came from legends and the Puranas. But as archaeologists, epigraphists, historians and numismatic experts dug deeper through the 19th and 20th century, the wheel gradually lifted. Inscriptions in temples Across the Deccan, large hoards of coins found in the Malwa Plateau, Maharashtra and Saurashtra, stupas built in Amravati in present-day Andhra Pradesh, idols found in far away Italy, the exquisite gateways of the great stupa of Sanchi and the Buddhist cave temples and the monasteries across present-day Maharashtra, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh have helped piece together their story. Nani Ghat, an important tax collection point on the route from the poet of Kalyan to Junar, which is believed to be an early base of the Satvahanas. The Gupta Empire, the golden age of India, a period at the height of Gupta Empire marked by extensive inventions and discoveries that contributed to Hindu culture in subjects such as science, technology, engineering, art and so on. Chandragupta I was a king of the Gupta dynasty who ruled in northern India. His title Maharaja Adhiraja suggests that he was the first emperor of the dynasty. Chandragupta II, also known by his title Vikram Aditya, was one of the most powerful emperors of the Gupta Empire in northern India. The scholars like Aryabhatta, who is believed to have envisioned the concept of zero, Aryabhatta is also believed to be the first of the Indian mathematician astronomers who postulated the theory that the earth moves round the sun and is not flat, but instead is round and rotates on its own axis. He also may have discovered that the moon and the planets shine due to reflected sunlight. Varamira was an astronomer, astrologer and mathematician whose main work is a treatise on mathematical astronomy. The period of Gupta Empire was a time of learning. The Guptas built many colleges and universities throughout the empire where students learned about science and medicines. Gupta writers created many kinds of literary works. They wrote poetry, fables and folk tales. They also created plays including both comedies and dramas. Some of the plays were about historical and political subjects. Large audiences gathered to watch the performances. The Golden Age of India produced many temples decorated with various sculptures and paintings such as Dash Avtara Temple, also known as the Vishnu Temple in Central India. The Iron Pillar of Delhi India erected by Chandragupta II to honor the Hindu god Vishnu in the 4th century CE. The Gupta Empire ended in 550 century when it is disintegrated into regional kingdoms after many series of weak rulers and invasions from the east, west and north. The Pallava dynasty existed from 275 CE to 897 CE, ruling a portion of southern India. Pallavas became a major power during the region of Mahindravarman I, 571 to 630 CE and Narasimhavarman I, 630 to 668 CE and dominated the Telugu and northern parts of the Tamil region for about 600 years until the end of the 9th century. Pallava's rule was marked by commercial enterprise and limited amount of 
colonization in Southeast Asia, but they inherited rather than initiated Tamil interference with Ceylon. The Pallavas supported Buddhism, Jainism, and the Brahmanical faith and were patrons of music, paintings, and literature. Their greatest monuments are architectural, in particular the Shaw Temple, the various other temples carved from granite monoliths, and the Varaha Cave, 7th century. These collectively were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984. At Mamlapuram, once a flourishing port. The Pallavas, who left behind magnificent sculptures and temples, established the foundations of medieval South Indian architecture. The Pallava script gave rise to several other Southeast Asian scripts. Chinese traveller Zhuang Zheng visited Kanchipuram during Pallava rule and extolled their banning rule. Pallava royal lineages were influential in the old kingdom of Kheda of Malaya Peninsula under Rudhvarman I, Champa under Bhadravarman I, and Kingdom of Funan in Cambodia. Central Asia's region, which stretches from Caspian Sea into the west to China and Mongolia in the east, and from Afghanistan and Iran into the south to Russia and to the north. The region consists of former republics of Soviet Union, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan as well. Central Asia has historically been closely tied to its nomadic people and the Silk Road. It has acted as a crossroad movement of people and goods, ideas, Europe, West Asia, South Asia and as well as for East Asia as well. The Silk Road connected Muslim lands with the people of Europe, South Asia and East Asia. From the 19th century until almost the end of the 20th century, most of the Central Asia was a part of the Russian Empire and later became the part of the Soviet Union. The king which ruled during this time was Lalit Aditya Muktapeda. Many Indian kings ruled South Asia as well. Lalit Aditya was an Indian ruler who ruled Central Asia. According to the 12th century chronicle Kalhana, it categorizes that Lalit Aditya was a conqueror who, and it credits him with his extensive conquest and miraculous powers in the Rajat Ragini. According to the Kalhana, Lalit Aditya defeated the king Yashovarnam, who was an Indian king, and then marched to the eastern as well as southern parts of the India. According to the reconstruction of the Kalhana's account, uh, 1969, it gives the theory that Lalit Aditya managed to create a short-lived empire that included major parts of India as well which are presently known as Afghanistan and Central Asia. This analysis was accepted by a number of writers who wrote the history of Kashmir. The Aham Kingdom was a late medieval kingdom in the Brahmaputra Valley in Assam. Established by Sukapa in 1228, a Thai prince from Mong Mao. The kingdom ruled from 1228 to 1826. It expanded suddenly under Swang Mong in the 16th century and became multi-ethnic in character, casting a profound effect on the political and social life of the entire Brahmaputra Valley. The Ahams influenced the political and the cultural life of Assam and ruled from the 13th century to the early 19th century. The Chari Dao was one of the earliest capitals of the Ahom Kingdom. The Ahoms were the descendants of the Shan or Thai tribe of Chinese origin who settled in the region of Upper Burma. The art, customs and dance cuisines of the Ahom people are unique and collectively exhibit the rich traditions of Assam. The Aham Kingdom was based on the Pahik system. When the Aham Kingdom expanded to include erstwhile Koj and Mughal areas, it came into contact with their revenue system and adapted accordingly.
the Ahoms Mughal conflicts refer to the period between the first Mughal attack on the Ahom kingdom in 1615 and the final battle of Ikta Kuli in 1682. There were three Burmese invasion of Assam between 1870 to 1826, during which time the Kingdom of Assam came under the control of Burma from 1821 to 1820. The defeat of the First anglo burmese War and the Treaty of Yandabu in 1826, control of the kingdom passed into East India Company hands. Thus, the rule of the Ahom Kingdom came to an end. The concept of India in its dynasties is more complex than it seems at first glance. We have huge dynasties like Pallavas, Chalukyas, Cholas, Nandas, Sungas, Reddis, and many more. In order to understand this stunning and kaleidoscopic country, we must seek its history that may give us some insight into how India has formed consolidated, influenced and assimilated its policies, identities, values and culture. India is perhaps much more a civilizational concept than a mere expression defined only in geographical, religious and ethnic terms. Thank you.